In this brand new series, I want to show you from concept all the way through to sophisticated modeling, how to use FreeCAD, why you're going to use FreeCAD, how it works, how you put the thing together. Your feedback is going to be important. If you have questions, I want to answer those questions. But I'm trying to help people who don't have a clue how CAD works. They want to get into it. They see FreeCAD 1.0 coming out and they want to get to use it maybe you've been using something else maybe you've never tried modeling before maybe you just got a 3d printer and you want to be able to create something um, unique on your 3d printer this is the series for you so let's start with a basic intro and we're looking at version one release candidate two and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back right to the beginning. And I'm going to start out with what is FreeCAD. And FreeCAD is a general purpose, open source, parametric 3D modeler. It's licensed under the LGPL license. And it's aimed at mechanical engineering and product design. But it's very generic and it has other uses, like architecture, finite element analysis, 3D printing, and many other tasks. It has many 2D components. You sketch planar shapes, and you create production drawings with a 2D system. 2D direct drawing is not the focus. If you want to create 2D drawings, there are other tools that are better at just doing that, if that's all you want to do. Neither is animation or mesh editing, which is one of my uh, struggles at the moment. It's very adaptable. It's multi-platform. It runs on Linux, Unix, Windows, and Mac OS. And it has the same look and functionality on all the platforms. Now, FreeCAD started in 2001, and it's maintained and developed by a fantastic community of enthusiastic developers and users. For resources, you can check the FreeCAD forum, the GitHub repository. Anybody's welcome to participate in those. There's also a wiki and a download page. All the links to all of those are going to be in the description below. The FreeCAD Project Association, FPA, is an ind independent body created by veteran developers, and it collects donations and other resources to support the project and its community, and it represents the project. Now I want to talk a little bit about the workflow, and this is the bit where I think a lot of people get lost. So you use 2D planar sketches to create 3D bodies. And we're going to go through what is a part, what is a body, what is a sketch, how do we pad a sketch, and how do we pocket a sketch. So as not to confuse anybody, this is my FreeCAD window. I have put my tasks on this side and left my model on this side. The reason I've done that is because I want to be able to see my tasks at the same time I can see my model. So one thing I want to show you is under my about FreeCAD. You can see this is FreeCAD and it's version one release candidate two. So this is the latest download that's available. I recommend if you're just getting started with FreeCAD, I recommend you download this version and I'll show you how to do that so that you can get started. But first, I want to show you a couple of the concepts that we've already mentioned. Now, this button here, it's a new empty document. And that's what we're going to do is we're going to create one of those. And just so we can show you the part, this is a part. And a part is a general purpose container to keep together a group of objects so that they act as a unit in the 3D view. It is meant to arrange objects that have a part topo shape like part primitives, part design bodies, and other parts. 
So I'm going to start a part. I always use a part. And then I create a body. And a body is where we're going to create our elements for a part. So a part can contain one body or multiple bodies. And those bodies all go to make up a part. So if you imagine a part being um, a nut and bolt, you can have one body be the nut, one body be the bolt, and then the part is the nut and bolt together. Now, before I actually do any modeling, I want to give you the chance to download this version. So what you do is you go to www.freecad.org, click the download now, Drop down, scroll down to here, and it says the release of FreeCab 1.0 is happening soon. Help us squash in last minute bugs, download and try a 1.0 release candidate build. Click on there. This is release candidate two. And then pick your version. So this is the Linux version. This is another Linux version. And if you look here, this is for the Arch 64. This is for the x86. Then there's a Mac OS ARM 64 version. There's a Mac OS x64, x86 version, 64 bit. And then there's a Windows version, x86, 64 bit installer, or the 7 zip file where you can just literally unzip it. So depending on which platform you're on, download the one that you want you can download the um, checksum as well and that will make sure that what you've downloaded is uh, complete and valid once you've done that you can do your install and that will give you a version of FreeCAD so I'm running the Windows version and I've also gone into preferences and under general I made my the size of my toolbar icons large so that you guys can see them normally I wouldn't have them that large okay so inside this version I created my part Remember, that's the container that holds my bodies. Created a body, which is the container that's going to hold my sketch. Now, what we do is we create a series of 2D planar sketches that allows us to model the part. And I'm going to show you that in the most simple form. So I'm going to create a sketch. And because it's planar, I'm going to pick a plane, which is X, Y, in this case and then I'm going to draw a shape this polyline um, icon allows me to create a shape with just lines and I'm just going to create any old shape a couple of things that are very important is that you close the shape properly and the way to do that if you watch in that circle when I see that X pop up that means it's going to find that point there. Close that. I can right click to get out of this tool. Then I'm going to close my sketch. I'm not going to do any more than that. Then I'm going to use this icon here, which is pad. And by default, it will pad a 10 millimeter pad. Now I have a 3D representation of that 2D plane. So remember, I drew a sketch that was planar, and I've just pad in is in other systems it's called extruding. Basically, I'm taking that sketch and I'm making it 10 millimeters thick, so I'm giving it the Z dimension. So the X and Y are the planar, and then the Z dimension is the depth. Over here in my tasks, I can make that depth anything I want it to be. So when you're creating a part, you want to imagine the part in 2D planes. So let's talk about that for a second. So if I was going to create this part 
if this were my part that I was modeling before I'd modeled this. And I look at this part, there's only one obvious direction that you would model it in because of these angles. You couldn't take this shape and just extrude that shape along here and end up with this shape because you have angles here, you have an angle here. You couldn't do it from that shape. The only one that makes sense is this plane. So you draw it in this plane and you'd extrude it. Now, if I wanted to have a hole in here that doesn't go all the way through, what I would do is I would just create another sketch. And I want the hole, in this case, I want the hole to go through here. So I'm going to select this plane. And that plane runs right through there. So I'm going to select that plane. I'm going to draw my hole. And one thing that's useful when you're drawing is if you use this view section, it views it from the middle. I'm just going to draw a hole. And in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stretch that hole a little bit so you'll see it break through. But not enough to cut all the way through it. So I'm going to close this and I'm going to pocket this. So pocket is basically creates a hole through it. Now there is a hole tool, but don't confuse that with the pocket tool. This one allows you to put threads and all kinds of crazy stuff in there. Most of the time you're just going to use pad and pocket, pad and pocket. And then there are some fancy ways to create essentially modifications of pads or modifications of pockets, but the basics are pads and pockets. So I'm going to pocket this. And you can see it's already cut in a hole in there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to touch it, do it the whole way through so that we can see it. And then I'm going to say OK. So now what happened was I took my hole or my pocket and I ran it from the center line where that plane was. And I'm going to turn those planes on so you can see them. So I ran from this plane, which is in the center of this, pretty much. And I came out this way with that hole. So again, don't worry too much about that. I just want to show you the basics in this um, first video. We're going to get into how to create complex models as we move along. But I wanted to start right from the beginning. I'm interested in your feedback. If this is a good start, if it's clear enough for you to get going to grasp the concept of this modeling. I think some videos start in assuming you already know how the thing works. And so what I wanted to do was to create something where I'm assuming you don't know how it works. And we're going to start there, but we'll rapidly move on to creating some nice complex models. So your feedback is very valuable. Just leave a comment below. And of course, you can always subscribe to the channel. That way you'll see when these videos come out. But because it's a new version, version one, I want to create these videos uh, using that version so you can see exactly how to use this modeler.